Welcome to this course on Solaris using third-party renderers. In this course, we'll learn how to use third-party renderers in this new amazing uh, Solaris context in Houdini. Solaris is based on the amazing USD Pixar technology, which using the Hydra framework allows us to integrate several uh, renderers uh, into one single setup. So why will you use different renderers? Well, in some studios, uh, people uh, use the renderers for the different features they have. So a render could be very fast, but maybe not have uh, one feature that it's uh, better than in another renderer. And in this case, uh, we can take advantage of all those different features in one single setup, just using it here in, in Solaris, in Houdini, which is what we're gonna be looking at. If you are uh, completely new to the world of Solaris, I recommend you uh, watch the, the, the Solaris workshop, which is a whole day of training that um, SideFX organized uh, a few months ago. It's, there's a lot of in-depth information here to get you started in Solaris. So also, if you are new to the world of USD, also they have lessons on that a specific part. Okay, so this is the scene that we we're gonna be producing by the end of this workshop. And you can see here in the viewport, I have a render man rendering this, this scene here. Uh, my scene is, it looks a little bit complex, but it's just repetition of stuff. We're just loading all the assets. Uh, I chose to do it this way because uh, a lot of people are start still new to Solaris, don't know how to bring stuff into Solaris. How do you bridge that gap? So I try to keep it simple and, 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 and help you bridge that gap in a way. Most of the bulk of the work will happen for us uh, setting up the materials and how do we set these materials for the different renderers and uh, how how Solaris uh, works with that. And it's really amazing. You can just select the drop down and just have your scene rendering another uh, render engine just like that. Which is really cool. So we're going to start by setting up all, all our renders, of course, uh, by this point, I uh, really think you ha know how to <laughs> install your renderers. Uh, we're going to be using Arnold as one of our third-party renderers. Uh, Redshift, which is, of course, the, the popular <laughs> renderer for everyone right now. Uh, and also, we're going to use RenderMan. And, of course, we're also going to use Karma, which is the Houdini new uh, renderer, which is only available in, in the Solaris context, uh, still in beta but uh, it, it's it's already uh, doing pretty cool stuff. All right, so we we're gonna start with uh, our Houdini Daddy and B configuration here. Uh, install your renderers as the, in the default way, and then we are going to uh, do some specific things here uh, to have them all work together in Houdini. Because one single thing off here and, and your renderers or, or most of the stuff you, you have here might not load. So I'm going to be using Houdini 18.0.532 uh, 18 here. So that's the, I, I make sure that I install RenderMan, which has support for that version. You can see my default uh, paths are here for installing RenderMan. And then you have to install, you have to set this, all these environment variables uh, for this. Of course, you can check the documentation and, and see exactly what you need. I don't, Think, I think for Linux, you don't need to set this up. I don't remember exactly, but there's some things that are specific for Windows here. I am recording this on Windows uh, right now. So some of these are, uh, I think one of these paths is specific to Windows. Uh, if we go to the, here to the uh, RenderMan documentation, there's one important note here. And I've heard all the people said that uh, RenderMan should be the last thing you having your uh, ENB file, but actually the documentation here says that um, this, you can see the uh, environment variable for uh, random for Houdini must be listed first in the Houdini that ENB. And this is because uh, there's some uh, older plugin that comes with, with Houdini by default. Uh, I think it's for RenderMan 21. And this, uh, having this as the first thing, uh, allows the plugin to unload that actually, uh, disables that, and then loads this new one, which is uh, RenderMan from Houdini 23. So it's very important that you have this as the first thing you load in your Houdini uh, EMB file. So you can see some of the examples here. It's pretty 
you can see this is the line that I was uh, mentioning. This is specific to Windows. Uh, I don't think that is uh, needed for Linux on, on other uh, and Mac OS, but it's needed for Windows. So be careful with that. Also be careful with the, uh, your, your notation. Whenever you do the, the Houdini path, it always has to end with this little uh, uh, semicolon and the ampersand symbol there. Uh, it's just it's just a, a new thing and it always has to have this thing at the end. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, you can see this is my EMB file and the first thing again, uh, as I said, is renderman. The other thing you need to be careful with here is you have Houdini uh, ENB path here. I mean the Houdini path variable declare here. So if you, uh, when you install uh, Arnold, it's gonna, it's not gonna add this part here. So it's gonna be just like, like this next line that I have here commented out, it's going to be like this. So this is actually uh, overriding this path and, and renderment is not going to be really loaded if you leave it like that. So you have to append this line here. This is basically means if we have this Houdini path already declared somewhere here, just add it to this basically. It's, it's like if you just copy this line and paste it here. So you can see here at the bottom when I'm re loading uh, Redshift, I also have this because there's already something in that variable. So I need to append it to the next one, to the next one. And this is something that caches people uh, off a lot. So be careful with this. Just make sure you have this uh, variable added basically. So you're actually adding it. The first time it, there's nothing before this. So it's just, you just fine to declare it like that. But after this, you have to just add it. You can see also to the path. I'm also doing the same thing because this path already has uh, a declaration up here. So we need to add the path here or this will override it. Uh, it's just, it's gonna start basically from here. And then down here, I also have it, the path and I have the path down here. It, it doesn't really matter where you put it at the beginning or the end, but you have to have it somewhere if you previously uh, added to that path. So basically this last path line is gonna have this plus this, uh, also plus this, right? A again, for the Houdini uh, path as well. Uh, for for uh, the uh, Redshift, to load into Solaris, you need to declare this pixel, pixel or PXR plugin path name variable and point it to the uh, Solaris um, folder, not the Redshift uh, folder, not the Redshift plugins Houdini folder, but the Solaris folder. Also this Houdini version variable just loads uh, whatever version you're loading right now. So be careful if you're not loading 5.32, this is not going to load the plugin correctly. Sometimes I just rather uh, declare the the variant the the hard coded variable uh, name here. In this case, will be this part. But uh, it's up to you how you want to deal with this. Uh, for now, I think that is fine. Okay, so now if uh, you have all these set up, you should uh, launch Houdini. If you have it open, just close it and open it back again. All right. So if you launch Houdini and you go to the top here, the top menu, you should see uh, the menus for Redshift, Arnold, and Renderman here. So if you see these menus, uh, it's a good indication that you have all your paths correctly. If you don't see one of these three here, uh, make go back and check your environment variables. Maybe you missed uh, a semicolon or something. And uh, make sure that also, if you are using Linux, you don't use semicolons. I think in, in Linux, you should always just use uh, colons, not semicolons. Uh, but always on, on, on Windows, you use semicolons. Uh, also, you can go to the stage uh, context here and check under this menu if you see uh, your renders here, Renderman, Arnold, and Redshift. If you see them here, this, that means that uh, everything is fine and they are loading correctly. Uh, the only one that might fail that it has the specific setting is Redshift. So Renderman and Arnold already do do that. Uh, load the, the, the Hydra Delegate correctly, but just uh, the, the single setup of the Houdini path. But Redshift has the extra path because I think the, the their integration is still a little bit in beta. So this, uh, you make sure you are declaring this variable if you don't see it in that uh, menu down there. 
Okay, I will give you a little demonstration of how this uh, unified setup, which is what I'm calling it, it's going to work. So here in Solaris, uh, don't worry, I'm going to explain everything in the videos, the next videos, but uh, I'm just going to show you what happened here. So I have all this setup here and here in this drop down, I, you can see I have several Hydra delegates, even this Houdini GL, uh, it's it's a Hydra delegate, so we are all always working in Hydra here, um, or with Hydra, so you can see we have a GL, so I just switched to that and we can see here uh, Houdini, like the OpenGL viewport basically, uh, like that, and then you have this the, the one for Karma, I can switch to the camera I was looking at, you see there's pretty quickly just updates and Karma is just rendering now, uh, which is great. Now we can switch to Storm is another delegate. Uh, it's I think it's a s example delegate from Hydra. I'm not sure. Uh, I always <laughs> ignore it. Uh, and, uh, then you can have Renderman, of course, and you can see you can just switch to it. And as you can see, is just rendering the same scene with the same shaders in a way. Well, it's using the Renderman shaders, specific Renderman shaders. But it's render exactly the same scene. Uh, Renderman the first time kind of takes a little while, this first render, and then just kind of goes up in velocity. I don't know why the first time just takes a little bit uh, more. But yeah, you can see now you we are rendering this with Renderman. We can switch to Arnold. Arnold takes a little bit of time to initialize the first time. So, so there you go. We are rendering with Arnold here now. Uh, and I think my settings are wrong for that, uh, for this uh, class there, but, and then you can switch to Redshift as well. And of course, Redshift is gonna use uh, the GPU uh, for for rendering uh, as, as it should, right? Redshift, I mean, that's what Redshift does. Uh, it seems like this slide is a little bit harsh on Redshift here. There's a specific life for this. So I just need to uh, change this, or this might be uh, a little bug on, on Redshift because this light uh, has been taken too uh, harsh in this context. But you can see that's basically what you can do. You can uh, switch between the renderers really quickly. Uh, you can even, uh, of course, manipulate the scene while you are rendering in any of this uh, context which is actually really, really fun to do. <laughs> it's really nice to just uh, move around and see the scene just clear up really quickly. Uh, it's so amazing just tweak shaders uh, so rapidly, just looking at different parts, if you want to look at this. Uh, pepper here, close, or this bunch of peppers here. And just focus on the shading of this part, and it's just just really nice to, to do this. Uh, Again, we can switch to another. You can see now that uh, Arnold it started. It's it's really fast to just update. Uh, you can switch to the render man. There will be some um, shading differences because uh, the renderers, of course, they have specific algorithms for the shading, different shaders, and they are all using their own specific settings and and features. So there might be some differences in in shading, but. Uh, if you need to, to use a specific uh, a specific feature for that renderer, uh, you can. You can see Karma is also uh, the one that is in beta, but it's so cool. Uh, it looks really nice. Uh, I really, really, uh, I'm really, really enjoying Karma as well. All right, so just uh, that's just a little overview of of here this this part of here. Let's just over uh, go over a little bit here of the, how the shaders are set up. Now uh, let's go for something that it's maybe a little bit more complex. Here you can see I have this molcajete, which is this guy here, and you can see you have uh, a bunch of uh, or a cluster of shaders. What I'm calling here. So this is, for example, this is the, the principal shader, which is the Karma shader. This is the Arnold shader. This is the Redshift shader. And this is the Pixar uh, Renderman shader. So you can see you are going to be using exactly what you know how to use already. So if you know how to use uh, Redshift or Renderman, uh, you are gonna set your shaders exactly the way you set them up uh, already. So this is gonna be already uh, so familiar to you, uh, just we're gonna learn how do we 
cluster this stuff to make it uh, work with all the setup here in, in Solaris. All right, so with that, we should be ready to start uh, doing some stuff in Houdini.